Lupin posted a mix set of numbers. Second quarter profits beat street estimates, but margins missed the mark. Joining us now is Vinita Gupta, CEO at uh, Lupin. Ma'am, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us. Now, it's been another great quarter with robust growth in revenues and profits. What factors did you attribute to the performance? It's growth across all of our uh, major regions. You know, our revenue growth was 18% um, in the quarter, driven by growth in the U.S. of uh, 21%, in India, 20%, in Japan, 22%. So pretty strong growth in in Japan. In fact, uh, our subsidiary uh, Kyova recorded uh, the highest growth uh, ever, 29% uh, in the quarter. Uh, smaller subsidiaries, uh, South Africa grew at 15%. So overall, uh, growth in all of our major geographies. Mm. You know, the other interesting bit out here is, could you tell us a little more when it comes to your plans in niche segments such as ophthal and dermatology as well? So in ophthalmics, we have a number of products that have been filed to the FDA, over eight products that have been filed so far. Um, we've just launched one product, Zymaxid, in the U.S. Uh, that has done extremely well for us. Um, you know, we had uh, first to file exclusivity in the product, so uh, uh, have uh, got uh, a majority share of the generic market. Um, we have other products that we will launch over the next uh, two years that will allow us to grow our ophthalmics business in the U.S. Um, also, with our recent acquisition of Grin in Mexico, um, we, you know, Grin is a ophthalmics business, so it gives us a, a very strong presence in ophthalmics uh, within Mexico and uh, potentially use the platform to get into other markets in Latin America. We're building our uh, pipeline um, uh, in India to, to service both uh, our generic interests as well as a branded pipeline that uh, we can bring to uh, branded generic markets like uh, Mexico and other parts of Latin America. On dermatology, we have a number of products in um, uh, development for the generic side of the business. We have uh, um, a number of uh, products in clinical studies right now. We hope to, to file uh, eight plus products in the current fiscal year um, on the generic side. And then on the brand side, uh, you know, the two therapeutic areas that uh, we are focused on is our dermatology and respiratory. Um, in dermatology, we have started working on uh, two products um, uh, that uh, we expect to bring to market uh, in three to four year time frame that uh, will enable us to uh, build a very nice uh, brand derm business in the U.S. Uh, we've used U.S. As the, as the anchor market and are okay. looking at the potential of uh, these products also in other regions. Sure. Now, we've seen, what, 20% growth uh, from domestic markets. Do you expect to sustain this growth going into the second half of this year as well? Um, we are very optimistic uh, on the domestic uh, market front. I mean, uh, we've had uh, a, a very good uh, turnaround of the business um, in the first half of this fiscal year. Um, you know, in uh, both quarters, we have done very well. In Q2, uh, we've grown 20% in the domestic market and are, are confident of uh, retaining 20% plus growth within the fiscal year, mm. despite the challenges. Okay. Now, now, we've seen robust growth in U.S. and Japanese markets this quarter. What, what areas are you focusing on in terms of expansion for the coming quarters? So, for the U.S. business, uh, you know, a big part of our business, 90% uh, of our business is generic and 10% is uh, brand. On the generic side of the business, we have a significant pipeline that will come to market over the next uh, couple of years. I mean, uh, so far we have launched uh, 75 products that generate just over $800 million in revenue. Um, you know, and our total number of filings in the U.S. are at 200. So every year we have the potential of launching 15 plus products, 15 to 20 products uh, that uh, will uh, help us scale up our U.S. generic business. So apart from uh, uh, just the sheer scale of a pipeline, the um, quality of our pipeline also has evolved significantly. We started with simpler products uh, a few years ago and have evolved our pipeline into complex products where you have higher barriers to entry, um, 
limited, uh, relatively speaking, limited number of uh, competitors, uh, first to file products where we have um, exclusivities, either short term or long term, that has allowed us to, uh, to expand the margin in the U.S. generic business over the last couple of years. We expect to continue to see that trend over the next couple of years as we bring uh, a larger part of um, our uh, semi-exclusive uh, first-to-file and uh, high-barrier products to market. Um, in the next three years, we expect to bring uh, more of our ophthalmic products to market. Uh, we expect to bring dermatology products to market. We've just started filing controlled substances in the U.S. So in the three-year time frame, we'll be able to bring um, you know, controlled substances to the market. And we have started investing into um, uh, inhalation products, which uh, will come to market a little bit later, you know, in three to four-year time frame. But uh, we believe that uh, there the competition will be even lower than the other therapeutic areas, uh, other uh, platforms that uh, we are pursuing and will... Um, uh, give us the potential of uh, higher and more sustainable margin. So, so very, um, very bullish on our uh, prospects for our genetic business over the next couple of years based on um, our current pipeline and the investments that we are making for the future.